Hi there everybody and welcome and welcome back to part two. Now last time we left it we'd done all the brickwork. The brickwork's already now just to be grouted up and some weathering. Now I want to turn my attention to the inside and get uh, some floors put in, uh, a little bit of wallpaper, just to make it look uh, like it's been lived in I suppose. The first thing uh, well it's not going to be the first thing actually, it's going to be the last thing I'm going to build but as we're looking at the front I will say about the roof which you can't really see so I'll lift the camera up a little tiny bit, there we go. So the actual roof is going to be virtually a skeleton. I'm going to put very very few tiles, probably just a few at the gable end and a few dotted here and there. I really want to see all the structure, uh, I want to see all the, uh, the, the laths broken. That's my idea for the roof anyway. Going round to the inside, uh, there's a few things we're going to have to do uh, before I start putting anything in. I'm going to need to sand these sills back just a touch. They're just sitting a little bit proud, just so I can get some plaster sheet around it and some trim. It's going to be a wooden floor at the base. Uh, first floor is going to be uh, timber as well, lath and plaster underneath, floorboards on top and to finish it off the top sit the ceiling at the top here that's going to be lath and plaster so with that what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get on and get these pieces sanded off and then we'll get started on putting some joists in now before we start uh, a quick few words about balsa wood because i keep getting a lot of questions asked can you buy it online where do i get mine from can you buy it to the size that I'm using. Now I always buy my balsa wood on the sheet and I always get my balsa wood from my local uh, modeling shop and a piece will only cost you about £1.50. Now for the joists I use 1.5 thick off the sheet and I use my uh, balsa wood strip maker cutter slicer whichever you'd like to call it very cheap they're about 10 pound uh, you set it up to the width that you want and you just cut as many strips off as you want I cut these 1.5s down to uh, 5 mil. that makes my joists uh, the laths this is uh, 0.9 thickness and I cut them down to 1.5 they should be slightly smaller than that but it's very very difficult to get smaller than a 1.5 uh, if you start cutting them yourself you will find it is very difficult to get below 1.5 so that covers the balsa wood now let us get on and get started on the base so we're going to start with the ground floor and I have my joists already cut like I just said in the the first clip these I'll go through it again these are cut down to 5 mil and they're 1.5 thick now I've done a lot of videos where I've been doing floors so I'm just gonna do just skirt around the edge and get this done if you really want a real sort of like in-depth into it there is videos up there and if I'm clever enough I might even be able to get one of them cards up on the side of the screen but I'm basically going to start in this far corner and if I can keep my big hands out of the way I'm literally just going to mark up to the end with using my fingers this is the first joist and I'm just going to break it because I want that tear at the end now that's the first piece which I'm going to glue in now I've got some PVA and I've put some uh, it's Vallejo model colour black into it just to darken it right down this just makes when you come to put in a wash onto it or your stain it makes it a lot easier because it will just make the PVA disappear into the corners being black so that's our first piece we're going to glue in there like so. Now I've cut spacers. These spacers, which you can't see, these spacers are 12mm. 
and we're just going to use these spacers as we go along and I well I think I could better do it with that so all we're going to do is a spacer a bit of glue uh, spacer put that brush down because I need both hands now and we're just going to put a spacer in between the joists like that uh, second spacer goes in about halfway so if we go about here and our second spacer goes in like so now we do exactly the same again we get our uh, floor joist we measure it up roughly with your fingers snap it and then we just put a little bit of glue on there on there now you can even put some glue on the base here across here it doesn't really matter it all helps it to stick and then that one goes in next to it and I'm just going to run along when I get something to prop that down with that's it now I'm just going to run along as you flip that out let's excuse this because I'm quite a distance away from it there we go I'm going to do that all the way along right up to this far end I am going to cut this piece off here because I want the joist to start going back so where this line is I'm just going to get the scalpel cut that off still bring my joist along and when I get to that bit, I shall show you how I'm going to get over that little bit. Uh, well, it's going to be exactly the same. We're just going to stick pieces on and actually get it. But I will come back to you when I get, get there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to carry on and get this whole floor in up to this point, And then I shall come back to you. Now, the piece that I actually cut out, I left a small little lip to allow my uh, spacers to sit on. I've cut the shape out, but I've kept the piece and... I've given it one wrap of cling film. Now I'm just going to slide that piece back in, like so. Now what I'm going to do is still do my spacer, uh, joist, spacer, joist. So we're just going to continue that on if I can just show you. So we're still going to break it off, like so. And we're still going to put a spacer in there on the end a bit of glue here now the cling film is just there to try and stop the actual balsa wood from sticking to the board because we don't want that bit of board in there so we get that one in put that one in there against there and we just use a little bit more glue like so, a bit on the end, and then our joist. This is very difficult because I'm quite away from it, and I've got a candle right underneath my nose, like that. So I'm just going to keep going on, and, and I shall finish all that. Then I'll leave it all to dry. Then I can just pull that piece out and we've actually got our framework uh, for the ground floor ground floor joists all completed now so we've just got to leave them to dry in the meantime I'm going to get on and do the first floor and it's going to be very simple we're going to build it on the bench and then we're going to glue it in first thing I've done is I've measured up a piece of balsa wood that runs the full length of the building and if we pull back like so and I'm all set up on my bench I've got my square piece of cling film my first piece of timber is that which I've measured up for the back now everything's going to be stuck to that instead of the wall so it's going to be very 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 simple this first corner I'm going to do with the dreaded super glue as soon as I get some out Super glue never works for me on camera. I don't know why. It's just one of those things. 
and this one's decided to block itself up hate super glue it's got a mind of its own no it's not it's yeah well, well we eventually got some out so I'm just using a little tiny bit of super glue and all I'm going to do is make this first corner because I want it nice and square like so push that one back push that one down excuse all the hands don't stick stick all right okay we're stuck so that's my first piece and all I'm going to do now is exactly the same as what we did on the ground floor I'm going to use a spacer in there uh, let me get a brush and we'll put the first one in right and we're going to do exactly the same uh, a bit of glue we're just using this piece of timber as the wall so a spacer like so then we're just going to sort of guesstimate the length of the joists because we can break them off later they'd rather be a bit longer than shorter so we put the first one in exactly the same way a little bit of glue in like so and then we start putting the spaces in now I'm going to roughly set them at the same distance as what we've got like that this is where a pair of tweezers come in handy and we have got a pair of tweezers handy so that in that in and get that in there as well right so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to build my frame up the same as I did with the ground floor and then we can just glue that straight in so I'm going to get on with that and I'll show you back with you shortly right I've completed the second floor which I shall bring in which is going to go we're just going to glue that in place there now I'm going to make another frame exactly the same as that as this one and this one will be going up the top here now I'm going to build it exactly the same but this piece at the back here this is going to be a sacrificial bit as when we come to fix it we will actually put our roof uh, trusses against that and then we'll cut that bit off uh, to make it all well all correct should I say so I am now going to get on and I'm going to build a, another frame same size as this one to go up the top the second frame has been completed and put to one side to dry now it gives us a great opportunity now of coming back to the ground floor because this is nice and dry as well and what I've got here I've already ripped my uh, planks down this is the 0 0.9 thick and it is 4 mil wide and it's going to be a very very simple job now of going from one side to the other laying these planks one at a time I'm going to be using the uh, PVA with the black painting uh, just so if it does come through when we put a wash on it it's going to blend in a, a lot easier this little piece here I'm going to leave in uh, just for the time being just as a little bit of support for when I'm pinning the uh, planks down so I'm going to get on with that and I'll be back with you in a minute floorboards have all been completed now on the ground floor and I'm quite happy with that I will need to come back when it's fully dry and we'll just do a little bit of fettling and tidy up break these bits off here now it's job hopping time now and we're going to be jumping from uh, one floor to the next now the next job I would like to get done uh, is the this actual first floor lath and plaster so it's going to be this floor I want to get the, the lath and plaster done underneath so we'll go over to the bench and we'll get started on that so this is the frame we made up first 
for the first floor. Now, what I'm going to, what we want to do is get some uh, lath and plaster on it. Now, I don't believe in doing more than what we you have to do. Now, part of this is going to be covered up by the actual floorboard. So, to me, there's no need to do the lath and plaster. Something you, it takes quite a while to do and not have it seen at all so first things first I've made sure that it's on the right rotation so we don't have the ceiling facing upwards or something silly like that and the first thing I'm going to do I'm just going to glue along the back edge uh, some plaster sheets all the way along like so I'm going to glue them and then we're just going to do the laths at the front where you see them where the floorboards finish so that's what I'm going to do first but I'm going to cut that back to about there because I want to put some small bits of lath in there uh, just so I can probably break the boards and you can actually see through so I'll get that done the plus boards being glued down and now the fun bit starts is actually putting the laths on now I've cut these laths down they're 0 0.9 thick and they're 1.5 1 wide and it's just a case now of doing exactly the same as what we did with the uh, floorboards. I will bore you to death. And it's just a matter of getting a bit of glue on right the way across and gluing them down the best way you can. Uh, spacings, you want about 0 0.5, but it is not really critical if they do touch well they do touch there's not a lot you can do about it but it's a matter of now there's no technique there's no uh, quick way of doing this but gluing it down like that if they start popping up the only thing I can suggest to do is to get some pins and where it's popping up just get a pin through just to hold it down uh, but that's pretty okay like that and then it's just a matter of move on to the next one just keep putting your glue on like so I know I'm probably boring you but I'll just run through it so you do know and there is a video somewhere uh, on the channel where I actually run through this extremely painful business of doing this but it's going to be worth it in the end so it's a matter of just getting your battens on and like I say if they touch they touch if they don't just make sure you've got a little bit of a gap to be quite honest with you the width of an, a, a pin would do and just push a pin in just to hold it in place width of a pin like so all we want is a little gap there so when we actually put the plaster on we can just push the plaster through just to make that doming effect on the top uh, like lath and plaster has now I, I shall bore you no more I will now get on and get this done now a very quick apology because I did say I would come back after I got a few of the laths on and I just carried on and finished it so that is the completed uh, ceiling now I have given it a quick wash in the brown uh, only just the areas that will be seen so that's all ready now for plaster but I'm going to put that to one side and let it have a good chance to dry off and I'm going to turn my attention now to the top one now when we made this we made it slightly bigger because when I get my big hands out of the way I'm trying to hold it that end made it bigger to give an overhang so when we actually come to fixing all this we can actually cut this piece off now what you do now is you give it an overhang get your pencil run along the underside and get a mark and now we're going to take this down to the bench we've got the mark on the underside we're going to take this down and that is where we're going to position our first lath so we're back there on the bench now 
this first lath has got to be as straight as you can possibly get it. So I'm, I'm going to do it with the dreaded super glue this time. And we're just going to put a little bit of dob of super glue. And we're going to try and keep it as straight as we can because this one will actually be going against the wall. And I can feel things just going wrong. But. we will continue on so once you get that glued all the way down and then you just carry on with your laths as we did before but not using the super glue use the uh, PVA with the pa black paint in because this will this whole top bit will be seen uh, through the roof so I'm now going to finish that off and I'm going to start putting these uh, laths on and I will try and get back to you when I've got halfway. Okay, I've completed putting all the laths on this last section. Uh, it went okay actually, no problems, no, no problems at all. I just got into it and got it all done. It's had a coat of the uh, gaming wash by Vallejo and I've also done, if I bring it into shot as well, I've done the floor as well. Just the first coat, just to get things started. Now, the most difficult bit now is going to be getting some plaster on it. So I'm going to put this one to one side for a moment because that hasn't uh, been long done. And this one's nice and dry. Now, what I've got is some fine surface filler and putting that down a bit fine surface filler uh, ready mixed and that's what I'm actually going to use now I've made myself uh, a little floating tool because the idea is now is to actually try and push this filler between the gaps so here goes we'll just lay some on and we're going to have to just go for it and we're just going to try and push the filler through the gaps like so and turn it over and yes we're getting that uh, effect if we bring that there where the filler's being pushed through the, the gaps and it looks like the lath and plaster now I'm going to carry on and just go over all of this and then I'm going to leave it to dry because it's going to take two coats because the first coat is pushing through and then we need a second coat to actually finish it off so I'm going to now carry on and I'll get both of these done and when they're dry I'll come back to you for the second stage Now, as you saw within a couple of photographs, I got the effect that I was looking for and I'm quite happy with it. Now we move on to giving it a second coat. Now, I've hit it with some 120 sandpaper just to take off any highs. And what I've done now is I've taken a little bit of the filler out and I've added just a touch of water with it just to break it down a little bit and just make it a bit easier to use. And we're simply just going to paint this on. now. I paint it on because the simple reason is I just find it easier to be honest with you and what we're going to do is just cover everything with one coat now don't be worried about getting it uh, ultra flat ultra smooth because this is interior uh, filler and it's very easy to sand so when it's dry you can just come back piece of 120 sandpaper and hit it with a piece of 600 and the job's done you get a nice flat finish so that's all I'm going to do now so I'm going to cover both of these I'm going to put them to one side to dry if it needs a third coat I'll have a look at that but I don't think it will while this is drying we'll get on and we'll get some plaster sheeting put up and other bits and pieces so I shall be back with you shortly 
Now the settings have been put to one side to dry so we can get on with uh, some other things. Now the first thing I'd like to do is use some of this uh, 135 scale plaster sheet and actually we can actually cover the bottom area. Now we're going to run from this corner all the way around and just cut out for the windows. Now I'm just going to be gluing that on with straight PVA so I shall get that done and then I shall come back to you. So I've run the plasterboard all the way around. Now this is where it comes to your artistic license. There's loads of ways you can go. Uh, the way I'm going to go is I'm going to give this a very thin coat of plaster, give it a rub down and then I should probably just put a skirt in and we'll box in the actual windows. Now there's nothing stopping you from going for wallpaper, uh, you could put picture rails up, you could put dado rails up, there's loads of bits and pieces that you could do but I'm just going for the straightforward uh, skirting uh, plastered walls probably won't even give it no colour but I'll just probably leave it white so that's what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give this a thin coat of plaster I'm going to use the technique exactly the same way as what I used on the ceiling I just uh, mix some plaster down with a little bit of water just to make it that little bit pliable I'm just going to push it on, leave it to dry and then I'm just going to get a piece of sandpaper uh, and just knock it back and just make sure it looks flat and smooth now I'll get on with that, uh, once I've done that I should come back to you so I've given it a thin coat of uh, the filler and sanded it down and while we've got access to it you might as well go you know go on and actually put all your bits and pieces on so what I'm going to start doing is I'm very simply going to start framing these windows up uh, and the door well I'm just going to run this this uh, floorboarding that's all it is is what we actually use for the floorboard it's the 0 0.9 by I think it was 4 mil I'm just going to run that all the way around the door the window I'm, I'm going to use it for the skirting board as well to run along the skirting and just to finish it off I'm going to put a picture rail you don't have to do this you can do whatever you want you know because this is your artistic license uh, the windows now we'll move on to the windows very quickly uh, because these windows have been made specially to actually fit these panels and if I turn that round hopefully the camera is going to play yeah uh, Les from Les's scale models he's actually been working quite hard uh, to get some uh, windows made that will actually fit and these do and they're very very nice little windows they're a two part window as you can see so you can actually position them so opened or closed or whatever you want to do with them now uh, Les well you can't actually buy these on eBay or anything like that but if I put the link in the uh, description box at the bottom go across to his YouTube channel and leave him a message if you want some uh, pester him, uh, tell him you'd like to buy some and maybe he will uh, put his finger out and actually start putting them on eBay to, so people can actually get them because they really are nice he's made a lovely job of them no complaints at all and like I say they're two parts so you can position them to where you want they are resin and that's enough sales pitch for Les but I will be using them in all the windows and they are sash windows so we go back that's the reason why I'm going to box this out uh, and make it look like the proper sashes the inside I will just clean up and we'll just put a, a, a little bit of brown paint just to match in with the timber just to finish it off so that's all out of the way I'm going to get on and get this done and I will, will return back to you as soon as I finish that off because then we need to move up to the second floor now that looks a lot better than what it did uh, on the last clip haven't really done much but it still looks good all we've done is we've boxed in around the windows to make them look like sashes uh, we've put the skirting board on and a little bit of a picture rail also what I've done I've given it just a straightforward black wash the 50 50 
that's all I've done and oh sorry and I've used a bit of Vallejo uh, gloss varnish just to give the floor a little bit of a sheen quite happy with that and it looks pretty good uh, nothing else I've done oh yes there is I've just painted the dark brown just down on the inside of the windows uh, just to take that foam board edge away now the ground floor is complete except for uh, your furniture dust muck uh, pictures all those sort of bits and pieces you can put put into that now so we're going to leave that and we're going to go now up on to the first floor yes I did say second floor on the last clip I'm correcting it now we're going up to the first floor now we've already built our first floor now all we're going to do now is literally just glue this into position there on top of the plasterboard now I shall get that glued in and then I shall come back to you first floor has been glued in and I'll just tilt this forward uh, there was a little gap along the underside there very easily fixed especially with just a paintbrush with a little bit of your fine filler on and that will fill that up and make that disappear now you're probably saying ah what happens if I wallpapered well if you wallpaper you really should only wallpaper up to the picture rail because that's the way they used to do it back in those days so that top part would be white so that's that sorted now we move on to the first floor now the first floor is going to be a mirror image to what we've actually done on the ground floor the only difference on this time is that I've got a little piece of 0 0.9 this is 5 mil wide a little strip that I'm going to glue along the top there this is going to make my wall plate and I'm going to do that first because the plasterboard sheets need to finish level with that as well so I will be doing the floor we'll be boarding the floor out just past these noggins I'll be gluing that piece on the top and then I'll be putting the plasterboard all the way around the same as what we did downstairs I will box the windows in uh, for the sashes but I won't be doing no skirting board or picture rail not as yet because I want to do a lath and plaster dividing wall so I'll get all the other bits done then I'll come back to you and we'll have a look at doing this lath and plaster wall I've led the floorboards I've put the plaster sheeting up uh, give it a coat of plaster uh, before I go any further I really want to get this this wall up here now I've got some uh, timber this is 4.5 by 1.5 it's going to be a very simple operation start off with the wall is going to need a you can call it a stringer you can call it a, a top and bottom stud whatever you would like but we need one piece of timber at the bottom and one piece of timber at the top and I'm simply just going to roughly measure them off and we'll break that the first one and then the second one roughly just break that off to the length now what I'm going to do now is put the two pieces of timber together I'm going to put that down onto the floor get my third piece of timber and we're simply just going to place that on top to actually get our mark at the top and as you can see I've already marked this piece of timber so I've just marked at the top uh, and now we go down to the bench and we just make a small frame now making this little frame up is virtually the same as my, uh, doing the ceilings now I've got my two pieces that we broke off which uh, we use to get measurement with so we're just going to put one of them one end and it stands up like so the piece that I marked uh, from the floor to the, the ceiling I've cut well I've cut, actually cut six I think I'm going to need somewhere on the region of about five but I did did one extra also I've got some of my little uh, 12 mil noggins and all we're going to do is start with the dreaded super glue which I've got on a little bit of foil uh, I'm getting the hang of this super glue malarkey and we're just going to start that corner off as we did with the ceiling 
well with the floor exactly the same now all we're going to do is PVA black PVA I haven't got a, a brush we'll see when we do that and we're simply now going to use a little bit of PVA pop in the spacer like so then a, another timber and I'm just going to work my way along like so another spacer I think you get the idea I don't think there's any need for me to run all the way through it now that's all I'm going to do right the way along until I get to the end and then I'm simply going to mirror this end exactly the same I'm just going to put this piece on when I get to the end there put my spacers on in and glue it all the way along now I'll get the frame all glued together and then I'll come back to you frame completed all glued together I've run some noggins down the center uh, the 12 mil ones also what I've done I've glued an extra piece of timber in uh, this is so I can use up some of my uh, off cut uh, plasterboard and that's when we move on to doing the plasterboard now we're simply going to be gluing this plasterboard on the end all the way up on this side like we did the ceiling and then when that's glued in we're going to run our laths from the plasterboard out and just break them off all the way along so we're going to cover this whole section when it's all nice and dry I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do exactly the same again plasterboard and laths and when I've done that I'll come back to you little wall has been completed we've got the laths one end the plasterboard the other on that side and if we turn it over we have the same the other side now it's a simple operation of doing exactly the same as what we did on the ceiling and that is to give it some uh, plaster push it through the gaps leave it to dry then give it a, a covering with plaster a bit of a sand and then we can put it into the house okay I've made a little start I've started to uh, frame the windows out now my little wall has dried we can actually get this glued in place now I'm going to glue it in roughly about halfway uh, I'm going to glue that in I'm going to put the skirting board on and the picture rail and then once I've done that I shall come back to you I've completed the skirting board and the picture uh, rail in both of the little rooms which I'm quite happy about it looks not too bad actually now we move on to uh, putting our next ceiling on now when I put this on I just offered it up did notice it was a little bit on the wobbly side I thought the frame had bent but no I made a small mistake by not allowing the 0 0.9 off this wall now there's a few ways we could remedy it we could sand this wall down we could cut the ceiling out and let it drop down over the wall I'm going to go for this, this, the easy option all I'm going to do is glue a piece of 0 0.9 timber on top of the piece that we put along the front edge so that will bring it all up so when we put our ceiling on it's going to sit nice and level easy so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to glue that piece on uh, this extra piece and then I'm going to glue the ceiling on but making sure that the ceiling is against the wall like so and we've got the overhang all the way because that's the bit we'll be cutting off after we've uh, put our roof trusses on so I'm going to get on with that and when I've done that I'll come back to you now I've fixed the ceiling as you can see and now we can actually move on to actually putting some uh, roof trusses on now this is the bit where I get uh, well I'm in a little bit of a turmoil now because the simple reason was is that 
I really sort of planned uh, to actually cut this front piece off all the way along and this was just there uh, to help me get my roof uh, timbers in which would have come back here but sitting here looking at it I do like the overhang and it would be nice to be able to put a soffit then a fascia board on the front of it and just put a few tiles with the gutter also that that distance set off is going to give a nice sweep to the downpipe that I'm going to put on at a later date now because I like that and I don't want to cut it off it throws up a few little issues now the first little issue I will show you is if I put my timber in so it comes there and there as you can see we lost a lot of the brickwork now to me it's not an issue I can, we can what we can do is actually put a fascia board up this side and create a little soffit box at the bottom here and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to carry on and do the timbers to this edge and we will come back to this when we've done the, all these timbers we'll come back to that and I'll show you a little bit more in detail uh, how I'm going to get over it now the fun bit starts we start fitting uh, the roof timbers now the first timber that's got to be fitted in is one tight against this wall because I need that to, as a packer to bring the, the next timber out so uh, very simple if we just place our timber on the top and to the bottom place another piece of timber level with it and we mark across there and in great blue peter fashion I've already cut this one so this will actually sit like that now I'm going to glue that one in first now that uh, first bit has been fitted and we move on now to the other pieces now if I can just get in there what we need to do now is cut this so it fits just nicely around that timber and it's called a bird mouth and all it is is a little V in the end of the timber and it will just sit on like that I've got it, up, I've got it upside down there we go, it goes that way and it is literally just a V at the end of your at the timber now cut one get it so it fits then keep that one to one side and use it as your template because you'll be needing to cut all of these all the way along uh, all the way down so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut a few of these using this as a template and when I've cut them we'll start fitting them all the way along now I've fitted the second piece of timber there with a the little bird mouth on which I will show you in a minute but what we need to do now is if we're going to be building this roof we're going to be building it onto nothing so we've got to put a support in from that side to the other so we can actually build our roof on it now if this is all going to work if we turn to the end if I pull you back a little bit now what I'm going to do is I've measured in 60 mil and put a mark and I've measured in 60 mil and put a mark here all I'm going to do is use this piece of uh, scrap and what I'm going to do I'm just going to pin it with a couple of pins which is very difficult to show you but I'm going to, just going to pin it in the upright position so this bit's sticking up I'll get that pinned piece of timber has been fixed in position now what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of 2mm by 5mm timber which I'm simply going to level across from the end wall to the piece of scrap timber I am going to glue it against the wall but where the scrap timber is I'm going to put a pin in to hold it I'm just going to make sure that's nice and level and then we can get on and start building the roof the piece of timber has been fixed right the way across and now it's a matter of getting your timbers with the bird mouth on and simply just gluing them top and bottom I'm going to try and do this around the camera so we're going to go from top to bottom what I normally do is I'll get one of my 12mm spacers 
which we used on the actual uh, joists just put a little mark at the, at the top like so and then just get your glue and just put a little blob of glue which I will do now so it's just a little bit of glue at the bottom which I can't see and where you've put the mark another little blob of glue now you put your timber in put it on the blob of glue but also just put a spacer in but remember to take it out uh, pretty quickly because you don't really want that spacer to dry right so so all I'm going to do now is go all the way along as it bounces out all we're going to do is go all the way along because I'm trying to do this with a camera in front of me at arm's length so what I'm going to do is go all the way along putting the spacer and gluing these timbers in I'm going to be breaking them off and gradually sort of bringing them down uh, as I go now when I've reached the end I'll come back to you and we'll take a little look roof timbers on all finished quite happy with that now while they're drying before we do anything else I've got to now move on uh, to this end bit and to start off with what I'm going to do is just pin a piece of scrap timber up underneath the soffit like that to make a little support and then what I'm going to do is cut some small pieces and glue them on top of each other it will be four pieces all together to bring me to the edge of that brickwork so I'll pin that now cut the four pieces get it glued and then we'll move on to the next four bit. little pieces have been glued in place and it just fills that corner up nicely now the next thing to do is uh, to get a bit of fascia now very easy if you line that bottom corner up with the top if I can do it there we go like so mark at the back and cut it at that cut it at that angle so it sits on top of them blocks in great blue peter fashion I've already cut one so that is going to be sat just there like that on that end so what I'm going to uh, do as well I've got a few pieces of bolter which I'm just going to lay in there like that and like that just filling that little bit of a void up and also it will give me something to actually glue my fascia to so I'm going to get that all glued in and then I shall come back to you now that bit's been glued in and before we complete this end I've got to just glue a piece of soffit board up underneath and all I did was just offer a piece up, run a pencil down, marked it and cut it to fit so I'm going to get that glued on and I should be back with you in a second now soffit board has been glued in and the next little job we've got to do is put some fascia on now the fascia I've cut this at 8 mil and I'm just allowing a little bit of an overhang at the bottom from that piece of fascia I cut a little square which I'm going to glue on that end just underneath there to make my little socket box now I'm going to get them glued on and then I'll come back all glued on, all finished I'm quite happy with that it looks nice and uh, neat and tidy what I'm going to do now is give everything a coat of the Vallejo brown gaming wash and when I come back we'll start putting the battens on the roof now everything's had a brown wash and also I started putting some of the battens on now the, the first two battens have to be set at 5mm uh, apart now all I've done for this I've used a piece of my uh, joist timber which is 5mm just placed it along the edge and then glued my first batten to the top of that once it's uh, dry I've just moved it up again and glued the second one now the reason that these two are so close together is because it's a it's a starter part of the tiling and as we're uh, going to be not tiling the whole roof 
I thought it'd be proper that I actually did it the correct way. What they used to do was have a tile on its edge that way and then the tile would start over the top of that and that would give it its water bond at the bottom. So your first two are just set at 5mm. Now the rest of them, it's very easy. I just use a tile. Uh, I'll normally put in a couple of tiles. You can put as many as you like in. Uh, half tile. And I just use that as my gauge. So I'm going to find the baton. So we just glue our next baton half a tile up like so and you just keep working your way up uh, once that once you've glued that you just take the tiles out put them on top and just keep going up and up until you've done the whole lot now I'm not going to bore you and sit here and glue everyone so you can see I'm going to get on I should get all the battens on and then we'll get ready to put some tiles on all of the battens have been glued down and now we can get on with some actual uh, tiling I'm just going to use the PVA with the black paint in and we're going to start on the bottom course which is the best place to start the first tile is going to sit just slightly overhanging just don't want to stop on today just slightly overhanging the gable end like so now I'm going to run all the way along there like that with the tiles on the edge uh, it's very difficult for me to to actually get to it but I shall run to the end there and then I'll come back to it my first course has been glued in right the way along uh, it's just it's very difficult because I'm working at arm's length and it's very difficult to actually place things now my second course is going to sit just over the top again we're just going to sit that first one one mil over now I'm just going to glue in line with that baton so I shall get probably about quarter halfway uh, tiled and then I will come back to you because then we're going to start going upwards okay I've got so far because we can add and take away as we require now all I'm going to do now is start just going up and I'm going to completely go up this end gable but I'm going to leave it staggered all the way down to this point here now I'm going to get on with that and get it all done and then I should come back to you I've done as much tiling as I'm going to do for the moment because the rest of it now is really down to artistic license and also uh, I don't know how long this video uh, actually comes to because I've not even put it together yet uh, which I shall do in a very few minutes once I finish this last clip now there is going to be another part, part three. Part three is going to be all the weathering, uh, making a little base, and basically finishing it. So that will be in part three, and I will start that part straight away once I get this video up so you can see what's been going on. So all I can do now is say thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully we will see you on the next one. Until then.